Let's look at an example. Um, here we have one of these functions that's defined as an integral, giving us this notion of sort of area so far. And this is a fairly simple example, right? Because we, we know what the curve looks like here. It's just a line. It's a line through the origin with slope 2, okay? And we're going to start at 1. We're going to end at some x, right? And now, since I'm using 1 and x here, I probably shouldn't use x for my horizontal axis. We'll call that t again, right? We're just trying to make sure we, we don't assign more than one meaning to the same letter. And what is f of x? f of x is just this area, right? So it's the area of a trapezoid. All right. So we can, we can compute this. I mean, we could go through the whole Riemann sum process, but that, that seems like a lot of work, right? So instead, we say we, we know how to calculate the area of a trapezoid. Uh, maybe you even remember the formula for the area of a trapezoid. Um, and if you don't, that's okay because we know, uh, we know how to do this, right? The area of the trapezoid is just the difference between the area of this big triangle and the area of the little triangle, right? So it's the area of this big triangle with base x height. Well, when t is equal to x, y is going to be equal to 2x, right? Because y equals 2t. So this side is 2x. Okay, and then we have to subtract off the area of that little triangle, which has base 1, height 2. Okay, well, we know how to do that. 1 half base times height. All right. 1 half base times height. Okay, clean that up. f of x equals x squared minus 1. That's a nice result, right? So this is, you know, this is a reasonable function. This is exactly the sort of function that we're, we're used to seeing. It happens to be a polynomial. Very good. Okay. Now, at that point we're done. We've we solved the problem, but there's one more thing we want to point out before we move on. Notice what happens when you take the derivative f prime. f prime of x is 2x, right? Using power rule here, derivative of a constant is 0. Okay? And then we come up here and we say, oh, wait a second. You know, the thing we're integrating here, if we call that f of t, right, little f of t, then what we have here is f of x, right? Because the only difference between f of t and f of x is you replace the t by an x. You replace the t by an x. Okay, interesting. So what this tells us is that this area so far function that we calculated, this, this thing that's computed as this integral, gives us an antiderivative of the thing that we were integrating. That is exactly the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? We've seen it here in this example. Next, we're going to state it formally as a theorem. Um, we might even look into the proof, try to understand why exactly the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus is true. We'll do a few more examples, and we'll move on to the second part.